The Fall Guy is director David Leach's love letter to the stunt profession. For those not in the know, Leach, before he became a director known for blockbusters like Bullet Train and Deadpool 2, was a stuntman, having worked on a whole slew of action classics. With this movie, he pays homage to an industry that is best described recently by Nicolas Cage, who said in an interview, Every stuntman needs to be a movie star and every movie star needs to be a stuntman. That's just mm. part of the profile. Of course, it's also a big budget remake of a classic TV show from the 80s, which ran for many years and starred the $6 million man himself, Lee Majors, as a stuntman who moonlit as a PI. He even sung the theme song, which is warbled here by Blake Shelton. Kind of a missed opportunity though, considering that Ron Gosling's I'm Just Ken was such a big hit. I'm just Ken. The buzz on this one has been through the roof with raves coming out of South by Southwest and none other than Steven Spielberg saying that he loved it. As such, it arrives at CinemaCon, where we saw it, making a bit of a victory lap for exhibitors, who are no doubt hoping some of the Barbenheimer magic rubs off on it, as it unites two of the stars from those movies. So is it worth all the anticipation and hype? Well, I gotta say, I had a blast watching The Fall Guy here at CinemaCon. It's an impeccably made comedic actioner, grounded by superb chemistry between Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Gosling has fun playing the nearly indestructible Colt Seavers, who is trying to get back on his ex's good side after ghosting her due to his insecurity over nearly being crippled in an accident. So, basically his ex, named Jody Moreno, played by Emily Blunt, is now directing a big budget movie, but the star of her film, has gone missing after falling in with a bit of a dangerous crowd. So of course Colt wants to get back on her good side and wants to reignite their relationship, so he's gonna try and find her missing star and save her movie. Now in the first scene of the film, Colt breaks his back and that's kinda supposed to make him not such an indestructible action hero, but you gotta say if the movie has one failing, they kinda forget about that early on because Colt's jumping around from building to building with ease, doing flips, crashes, and hits without any limitations whatsoever, to the fact that he becomes kind of a superhero in some ways. Although instead of tights, he has a much cooler Miami Vice stunt team jacket, which I gotta say, anybody watching this movie is definitely gonna want and could even become a popular Halloween costume. In fact, I'd say it's an even cooler jacket than the satin one he wore in Drive, but I digress. It has to be said that as a love letter to the stunt industry, the movie is extremely successful and that Leach and his crew at 87 North have really put together some amazing set pieces. The action highlight of the film is an amazing scene where Gosling fights a bad guy in the back of a truck while being dragged, all of which is scored pretty well, I have to say, by Phil Collins' Against All Odds, juxtaposed with the heartbroken Blunt singing it while she thinks that she's been stood up for a date. The plot is pretty good here, with Seavers being turned into a quasi-gumshoe by an untrustworthy producer, played by Ted Lasso's Hannah Waddington, who wants him to find Aaron Taylor Johnson's movie star, Tom Ryder. Now, this Ryder character seems informed by perhaps all of the stunt people involved in the movie's worst idea of a movie star, being one that takes all the credit, but none of the risk. Sort of an anti-Tom Cruise. The premise is basically an excuse for non-stop action, and the movie is jam-packed with carnage from start to finish. But it works really well and aligns with the kind of plots that Lee Majors' Colt Seavers used to get embroiled in each and every week. Notably, the film is also very much a romance with Colt and Jody's relationship at least as important as the carnage and mystery, which is refreshing given how unromantic most modern action movies have become. With the old school action, minimal CGI, and real deal stunts, this feels like a throwback to 90s action in the very best way. Through it all, Gosling and Blunt show themselves as real deal movie stars, with the charisma on both cranked up to 11. Colt Seavers is a fun enough character that it could turn into a franchise for Gosling. He's portrayed as clever, uncomplicatedly heroic, and more than able to handle himself in a fighter two dozen. If I have any complaints, it's that the bar for the action keeps getting set so high that by the time the movie starts coming to an end, you almost start to get numb to all the action, as it's exhausting to kind of keep up with it. But this was a problem that a lot of 90s action movies, particularly Jerry Bruckheimer movies, had, where you're seeing so much amazing stuff for two hours that by the time the ending rolls around, you're almost tired. But running just over two hours, The Fall Guy really never does wear out its welcome and looks bright and beautiful with colorful locations in Sydney, Australia, and a polished, slick look. The Fall Guy really is a terrific summer action movie and a throwback to a different, better time in action movie making. More than anything, it's a tribute to the stunt industry and a demand that it gets the recognition it deserves, including Oscars. And the point is made over and over again that CGI action is simply lame and really can't hold a candle to the old ways. And I gotta say, I'm 
more than inclined to agree. I give this a strong 8 out of 10.